Well, it seems unlikely that the Baltimore Ravens are going to trade up in the 2024 draft. There's three different scenarios that come to mind where the Ravens could potentially be interested in moving up. I got three players to watch to keep on the radar for the Baltimore Ravens in the 2024 draft that might require them to move up from 30 coming up on today's show. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. We're talking blockbuster draft trades. I know I may only be 27 years old, but I still miss blockbuster. It was great back in the day. Let's go ahead and run through the Ravens draft picks here for you. The Ravens pick at number 30 overall in the first round, followed by a second round pick at 62, a third round pick at 93, a fourth round pick at 113, followed by another fourth round pick at 130. And that's not all. They have a fifth round pick at 165. Uh, a sixth round pick at 218, a seventh round pick at 228, and another seventh round pick at 250. So all in all, the Ravens have nine picks. So if they do want to move up, they have some flexibility to potentially move up with having nine picks to work with before talking about trading players or picks next year and all that. So before we dive into the trade scenarios, I want to ask you guys, do you trust GM Eric DaCosta's draft plan? With what he's done in the past and what we've heard the rumblings about heading into the 2024 draft, do you trust him? If you do, like the video. If not, comment why. Tell me you don't. Let us know one way or the other, and we'll get started with today's show. Scenario number one. Let's begin with Quinion Mitchell, the corner out of Holly Toledo. Uh, Matt, what a prospect this guy is. And we have seen his stock just soar, just skyrocket for the Toledo Rocket. No pun intended. Uh, he's been fantastic in the draft process as he was unbelievable with the 40 time that he ran, a 4.33, but he showed off in all sorts of stuff ever since. And, and not to mention that you're looking at a guy, sure, he played – at you know the group of five level at Toledo, but every time that he has been asked to go up against guys of you know power five caliber and such, he has met uh, that with you know ease of sorts, if you will. Incredible speed, and I would also add that when you look at Mitchell, that he's got the highest ceiling of any corner in this draft. If you were to point to all these corners and say who has got the most potential to be great, it's Quinion Mitchell. It's not even close. The statistics from Quinion Mitchell, you go back to 2022, he was fantastic. Five interceptions that year. This year had one interception, 18 pass breakups. But here's the real story here, folks. You look at the coverage stats. This is somebody that allowed less than 300 yards, uh, did not allow a single touchdown, a QB rating of 51.1. Look, we love Marlon Humphrey, but... He had some injury issues. Brandon Stevens, he's a solid corner. Not great, but not bad either. The Ravens clearly need some help, and if they're looking for help, Quinion Mitchell could be exactly the guy the Baltimore Ravens are looking for. So let's ask you our pin comment today. Should the Ravens trade up for Quinion Mitchell? Why for yes and for no? Way in the comment section, tell us what you think. Today's show is sponsored by Price Picks. Price Picks, the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works. Choose two or more players of any given category. Get the choice of more or less. Whether you're talking rebounds in basketball, home runs in baseball, maybe it's goals in hockey, fantasy points at NASCAR, all sorts of different categories to choose from. This week, my eyes are on the Masters, a tradition unlike any other. I was eating some pimento cheese and watching the Masters. I felt like I was right in Augusta. You can feel like you're right in Augusta, too, when you play along with us in prize picks. As I got Phil Mickelson less than two and a half birdies or better. Victor Hovland with more than three and a half birdies or better. If both these hit, I'm turning $20 into $60 on prize picks. Play along with me, prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS for a $100 deposit match on your first entry. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Download prize picks today. Scenario number two, we know the Ravens are going to be drafting a receiver high, whether that's in the first round or whether that's day two. But one to keep an eye on is Brian Thomas Jr., who we've seen his stock kind of fall a little bit. There was talk early on in the draft process of him being like a top 15 pick. Well, it looks like he's going to go anywhere between 20 and 
about 28 potentially. So just before the Ravens pick, if they're looking for receiver help, Brian Thomas Jr. could be their guy. The number 16 overall player in the draft, the number four wide receiver on Mel Kuyper Jr.'s big board. And there, there's two things about Thomas in particular that I like. For one, he's ready to start right away. He would be an immediate impact player for this Ravens offense. And we've talked a lot on this show how much we loved the Zay Flowers pick last year, how well it worked out for the Baltimore Ravens, what he brought to this Ravens offense. Well, Brian Thomas Jr. is a completely different type of whiteout compared to Zay Flowers. This is a big guy, right? This is somebody that's going to make a difference in the downfield passing game in the red zone, those jump ball opportunities. You don't talk about that with with Zay Flowers. He's a short passing game, you know, possession receiver. So these would be two completely different receivers that bring something to the table. And you look at Brian Thomas Jr., I mean, he was just unreal last year. 17 touchdowns? I mean, that's incredible. Over 17 yards of reception, over 1,100 yards, 68 catches. He was phenomenal, and I would expect him to be an instant impact player for this Ravens offense and be exactly what Lamar Jackson and company is looking for. Not to mention, you still have Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely at the tight end spot. That's a win-win for me. I'll take Brian Thomas on my team any day. Should the Ravens trade up for Brian Thomas Jr.? Type T for trade, P for pass. Weigh in the comment section let us know what you think. Should the Ravens bring him in or not? We're talking about your Baltimore Ravens each and every day leading up to the 2024 NFL Draft as we bring you daily news and rumors. We also were talking not just the draft, but potential trades. We're talking free agency. It's all in one place right here on the channel. Lock us in and never miss a moment. If the Ravens make a move of some sorts, we're going to talk about it here on Ravens Rundown. The latest happenings in your favorite team covered each and every day here on Ravens Rundown. Subscribe now for free. YouTube.com slash Ravens TV. Tell a friend or two and make sure they join the crew here on Ravens Rundown. Situation number three. This one we go offensive line. And this is where we find Washington offensive guard Troy Fontenot. We're, we're working on that name here. I've heard about 10 different pronunciations. But Fontenot uh, out of Washington was there from 2019 to 2023. First team all Pac-12 and Pac-12 offensive lineman of the year in 2023. He's seen his stock really rise up as Mel Kuyper's got him as the number one offensive guard, but also the number nine overall player on his big board. And let's be frank here. The Ravens have a lot of issues when it comes to the offensive line. Uncertainty at tackle, uncertainty at guard. And when I look at Fountainew, this is somebody that can play both tackle and guard at the next level. He's got experience playing both. So whatever the Ravens ask of him, if they prefer for him to be a tackle, if they prefer for him to be a guard, he is capable of starting week one at either position. So this is great for Baltimore to kind of get the most out of him to see uh, what exactly he could do to fill that need that's so desperate in this offensive line. You get a high-level player that can do multiple things, that's a win-win. The grades uh, from Fontenot last year was an overall grade of 75.1. He allowed two sacks, three three, uh, hits, and uh, 18 penalties. Did allow six uh, six penalties in total, but a very good football player. I think that he'd be a great fit for what the Ravens are looking for in either need that they ask of him, whether it's tackle or guard, either one. Nice to have that flexibility. Who's a player the Ravens should draft? We talked about a few names here uh, that they should keep an eye on for potentially trading up for. Who's somebody that comes to mind that you would like to see the Ravens try to make a move for? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for stopping by and joining us here on Ravens Rundown today for the best Ravens coverage you're going to find around. you got to be right here on the channel every day. And one great way to thank us for the work we're doing, just simply hit that like button. helps out the algorithm to get this show out to as many people as possible. If you enjoyed today's show, hit that like button. We certainly would appreciate it. And we will see you next time right here on Ravens Rundown.